Hello everybody, welcome to the official World Championship recap video. We've just finished round two, we're about to start round three, so I can let you know how the groups look and who looks like they're qualifying, what they have to do, etc, etc. So starting with group A, you can see first place we've got K Fog and Yatsik, essentially both with, well, one's with three touchdowns, one with two touchdowns. Then we've got Le Peg on two points. Blue Max is unfortunately eliminated with zero points. Now, Le Peg is playing Blue Max, obviously favoured to win on two touchdowns, which means that if he wins, he'll be on five points. So if either K Fog or Yatsik wins, they definitely qualify. If it's a draw, it will go to touchdowns four as the tiebreaker. So if it's a draw, K Fog will definitely qualify ahead. Well, K Fog will definitely qualify on a draw, and he will definitely qualify ahead of Yatsik. There is a world in which Yatsik and K Fog draw 2 2. Le Peg wins 1 0, and Le Peg's eliminated. But that's, I'd say that's unlikely. I would say generally, if Le Peg wins, he qualifies, and Yatsik basically needs a win to qualify as well. Um, so I guess I'd fancy K Fog and Le Peg to go through here. And we can have a look at Group B. We've got Frankie there with two wins out of two. And his final game is versus Viking Cop. So, and I'm mean, looking at the points, he's on 6 3 1 1. There is no way he can be challenged. Frankie is definitely qualifying. Uh, Viking Cop is not definitely eliminated, right? He could get to four points. Arzwain could also get to four points. And then Viking Cop could, could win, for example, 2 0. And Arzwain could only win 1 0. And then Viking Cop would qualify on four points. So it's possible. <laughs> it's very possible. Um, Viking Cop, however, is playing Frankie, who's won both of his games with Undead. And Arzawain and Ratamo are in a Imperial Nobility mirror. Of course, if Ratamo likely only needs a draw to qualify. Uh, due to having a better touchdown difference and more touchdowns scored than Viking Cop. And having essentially an easier opponent. Arzawain's a good player, but Imperial Nobility aren't a good team. So, I mean, Frankie's definitely qualified. Given the rest of the state, I mean, you've got to say... Ratamo is favourite favourite to qualify, right? Likely a draw is good enough to get him to qualify. Um, however, if Arzawain wins versus Ratamo, he'll be on four points. He'll have scored more touchdowns than Ratamo. I mean, have more points than Ratamo. And even if Viking Cop wins, he'll have to win by more than Arzawain wins. So I actually wouldn't be surprised to see Arzawain qualify here. Maybe my picks are... Well, no. Ratamo only needs a draw. So let's go Frankie and Ratamo to qualify from Group B. Right, move Group C, oh dear, oh dear. I'm, I have, wouldn't say I've been robbed, but you can see that I've taken seven casualties in two games. A um, Couple of dice rolls away from winning one of them, but unfortunately I find myself on two points and requiring a win versus two mission. Nothing else will be good for me, but a win will qualify me regardless of what happens with Truk versus Kelethorn. Truk's on four points, two is three, myself two, Kelethorn one. It's still technically possible for Kelethorn to qualify. Um, he just has to win versus Truk, and then actually he'll have more touchdowns scored, right? Truk's only scored one touchdown. So if Kelethorn wins, he'll be above Truk, and then if I or Tumish wins, uh, Kelethorn will qualify. So actually, Kelethorn, even on one point, isn't out yet. But he has got All World Alliance. So I definitely fancy Truk to beat him. And then that leaves myself versus Tumish. A draw sees Tumish through. And so therefore, Tumish has to be favoured, right? He's Orcs versus Dark Elves, just need to draw. And he's a very good player. So I think this group is going to be Truk and Tumish. And I will. Rue the day, I took a million casualties and rolled some double ones. So yeah, I think unfortunately I'm gonna I could actually be eliminated undefeated. There is a, there is actually a decent chance of that. I think a draw is the most likely result and I'm really gonna have my work cut out for me having trying to win against Tumish. So there you go. Um 
Group D. We've got Zerpils is not definitely qualified, but <laughs> he scored six touchdowns. So on points he's not. He's on six points. Gabby Aston Ceremon on three. Slave Black Mage on zero. Is is he is he definitely eliminated? He's actually not definitely eliminated, right? Because Slave Black Mage could beat Ceremol and Zerpils could beat Gavias and we could have three players on one zero two. However, Slave Black Mage has scored zero touchdowns. So you'd have to score so many touchdowns. Well, <laughs> you'd have to win like three nil versus Ceremol or something. Yeah, he'd have to win 3 0 versus Ceremony. So, Slayer Black Mage is essentially eliminated. Um, Zerpils is essentially qualified on six touchdowns. So, Gabby Yass has obviously got a tougher game playing against Zerpils' top Skaven than Ceremony is facing Slayer Black Mage's bottom humans. So, I guess the favoured teams to go through here are Zerpils and Ceremony to join him. Group E. We still don't have a winner. This this is a cool situation um, because of all. So we've got Strider on six points, Misspell Tree and Jay Leave both on three, and Piper on zero. This is another situation where anybody could technically qualify. Oh, but um, Jay Leave is a bit of a maths whiz, and he's worked out that um, that the way the tiebreakers work, the the it can't go to a playoff. So something will happen decisively with touchdowns, but it's very important who plays who and when they play and everything. So they're going to try and play both games simultaneously. Lots of things can happen. Um, Strider has beaten the two teams he should have beaten, which are the All-World Alliance and the Lizardmen. Miss Bell Tree did not beat the All-World Alliance, so Jay Leave is there, al you know, alive. Piper technically alive. But again, not so much right on zero points. So you have to favour Strider to get through. But um, Miss Beltree could beat him and go with him. Or Jay Leave could. Any, I mean, anything can happen. It's a really close group. But I'm I'm fancying... Honestly, I'm still fancying Strider and Tree to go through here. I feel like all the lines are really going to struggle versus Lizardmen. So I would fancy maybe even Tree to go through with a draw here. And Pipe up to beat Jay Leave. So I guess the interesting thing is Tree may feel like she has to win, so then may lose going for the win versus Wood Elves. That is also a possibility. Uh, Strider does only need a draw. A draw will absolutely secure him the qualification, and honestly, a loss probably does as well, in all likelihood. But um, yeah, it, Group B is a very interesting group, and hopefully, we'll have a, a you know a dual cast of the two games. All right, Group F here. So uh, th this is an easy one to work out because we've got draws. Uh, Shirts and Teddy Tom have both drawn a game. Olivier Delac won both. Zar Hughes got a win and a loss. So Olivier Delac is definitely qualified, 100%. Um, he's playing Shirts. Shirts could win that game, of course, and go to four points. But likely the winner of Zar Hugh and Teddy Tom will join Olivier Delac. Um, I would fancy Olivier Delac to at least get the draw. Versus the Elven Union there. Wait, no, sorry, the Undead there. <laughs> and uh, I'd fancy Zahu to win as well, honestly. So I, I'm going to pick Olivier Dulac and Zahu to go through from Group F. Okay, here's Group G. Um, we've got Nuru on two wins. He's definitely qualified. The Ivy on two losses is definitely eliminated um, because they're playing each other. And Matabolitos and Rio Bravo are playing each other as well. So we can't get a three-way tie for first or second. Um, it's definitely Nuru qualified. And, well, basically the winner of Matabolitos and Rio Bravo joining them. If it's a draw, then Matabolitos will qualify. They've both got two touchdowns for, but as you can see, he's got less touchdowns against. So Matabolitos goes through on a draw or a win with Shambling or Dead versus Dark Elves. It means you've got to pick him. So it's looking like Nuru and Matapolitos coming out of Group G. Group H is a funny one. Uh, Andy Davos started with a draw versus the Chaos Chosen. A horrendous result for him. But then he got the win versus Le Marcelet. Maybe the hardest match he was going to have out of the three. 
um, at least racial matchup wise. So he's actually sitting pretty now, top of the division on four points. Marcelle and Breaky T both on three. Bale are on one. So the Marcelle, I would definitely fancy to win his last game versus the Chaos. Um, that will put him on six points. And he's also got a better touchdown difference. Um, ah, that doesn't really matter. I think he'll just win. I think he'll just win. <laughs> um, but I guess there's a possibility of he draws that game and then break it or break it as he is. is that's what I think he wants to be called. <laughs> that's what he calls himself. He says he doesn't have any preference, but I'll, I'll try to call him break it. I just started calling him break it before I knew. And, you know, it kind of sticks. So they could draw, right? They could draw. No, no. Break, if Break it wins, he's on six points and he's definitely qualified. If La Marseille wins, he's he's on six points and definitely qualified. If Andy Davo wins, he's on seven points and has won the group 100%. Um, now, if if Break it wins and La Marseille draws, it's very likely that La Marseille qualifies, right? Um, but. In fact, yeah, 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 it's, it's interesting, but um, I'd fancy Devo to get the result versus Brekity and Lamassele as well. So strong favourites for me in this group are Andy Devo and Lamassele. Right, Group I, we have Surveillance there with two wins out of two. Sergo on two draws, Zapatsky and Spitfire both on a draw and a loss. This means Surveillance is definitely qualified. Uh, top of the group, <laughs> as you can see, there's, even if Sergo beats him, he's on five. So, yep, Surveillance is absolutely the champion of this group. And, well, will Sergo beat him? Probably not, right? <laughs> Maybe, right? He might not care, though, because he's, he's qualified. He's not only qualified, he's first Surveillance. He's got nothing to play for at all. Um, the winner of Zapatsky and Sp Spitfire, you know, will, will qualify if Sergo is held to a draw or a loss. So maybe maybe surveillance will just try to actually the Sergo just has loads of block on his orcs. So actually that might be better versus Skaven, right? Just getting more hits in with block might beat them up more. Um, I actually wouldn't be too surprised to see Sergo beat surveillance and and qualify with him. So I'm I'm going to do that. I'm going to pick a kind of an upset in this one. It's not really supported out by the stats, but I'll go with surveillance and Sergo qualifying from Group I. Now Group J. Oh, this was a this was a pretty much a group of death. I thought this one, and uh, it, I think it has been death for Coke Guy. Yes, he's playing Wenteros, so that means Wenteros is definitely qualified. Two wins out of two. Mad Jake and Spartacus both of the win or loss now face each other. The winner of that will definitely qualify. If it's a draw, then it's going to be Mad Jake qualifying, isn't it? Because he's got the better touchdown difference. So you have to bet on Mad Jake, even though he's Orcs, even though he's Orcs against Lizard Men. The racial matchup does favour Lizard Men, and Spartacus, I think, has played great. However, I don't like his build. He's got only three Bloxaurus, two guard, and a tackle. Tackle, obviously, wasted versus the Orcs. Um, the guard's okay, but ultimately, I'm, I've got to fancy the Orcs to at least get the draw out of that. So I'm picking Wenteros and Mad Jake to make it out of Group J. Okay, Group K here. This is a very tight group. We've got Rock on four, Serafino and Aresius on two, and Petey Poo's on one. So everyone can still technically qualify here. It's obviously going to be more difficult for Petey Poo's because he's only he's got zero touchdowns for. So he'd have to he'd have to beat other people's touchdown difference. Um, well, I guess hmm. yeah, actually, if he just wins two nil, if Petey Poo's wins two nil, and Rock loses. But all these things that are contingent on other people losing is less likely, right? Looking at the points, if Rock wins, he'll qualify. It is a, an orc mirror, so maybe a draw is on the cards. And I'd actually fancy Serafino with Wood Elves to beat Undead. I feel like Wood Elves are just too fast for Undead. So I'm going to pick Rock and Serafino to get out of Group K. And we can have a look now at Group L. We've got Nabolo here has definitely qualified 
on six points with eight touchdowns for as well. Crazy. And nine cas for. Unbelievable from the bolo. 100% in on six points there. Not really caring about his last ma match versus Fufale, who's only on one point. Same as Dragu. And Benbo Baggins has got a win and a loss. So, you know, looking at that, Fufale's probably got the toughest ask, the guy who's beaten Lizards twice already. So it's looking like a straight match between Dragu and Benbo to see who joins him. And of course, the fact that Benbo only needs a draw makes him a big favourite here. So Nabolo and Benbo, I'd imagine, will go through from that group. Group M. This is a this is a really fun group, actually. We've got Diomed, one of the favourites to win the tournament. And we've got Mr. Page with his hilarious seven mighty blow build. And everybody's won one, lost one. And so it's all down to the last game. There are there are, there are slightly different rankings based on touchdowns for and touchdowns against. So Jonesy is technically in the best spot, followed by Diomed, followed by Caster, followed by Mr. Page. But of course, if anybody wins their game, they will qualify. Um, I guess if Jonesy draws, he will qualify as well, right? Because he'll be on four points. He'll be on four touchdowns. And Mr. Page won't be because he's drawn against him. Or like, I'll, he'll, he'll be on one more than Mr. Page if he draws. And the same with Diomed. Oh, I guess maybe not, right? Because maybe, maybe Jonesy and Mr. Page could draw nil-nil, and then maybe Diamed and Caster could draw two-two. So yeah, so maybe, maybe they'll need wins, um, Diamed and Jonesy. But they are both ahead. I think they're also both favoured in their games. So I would bet on Jonesy and Diamed qualifying from this group. But anything can happen, right? In one game of Blood Bowl, so. Very, very close. And Group N. This is also a pretty cool group. Um, unfortunately for Cold Troop, though, he's lost both of his games and is out. And so is Sip Jin. And Ivan Colin and Bright have both qualified. So they, they, you know, they did the business. Bright and Ivan Colin haven't played each other yet. They've both secured qualification. And uh, the only thing to see is if Cold Troop can avoid losing all of his games. Uh, the other humans have also lost both games. So it's possible that humans could go 0, zero 6 in this tournament, which would be a bit sad. Cold Troop was the underdog hero of the Season 2 Finals, which was like the precursor to this tournament. But yeah, I mean, well done, Bright and Ivan Cole, in nego negotiating this group because they got through pretty easily. And uh, yeah, fair play to them. They're playing to see who wins the group. So that should be a cool match. And then we've got Group O there. Looking at this one, we've got Gogo -Go Bay on six points because he was playing against Imperial Nobility twice. <laughs> Spinky on three, and Fez and Andri both with a draw and a loss. Uh, now, I mean, Andri's a, Andri's a really good player and he's got a draw and a loss. So, would he do better against Dark Elves in the final match? Maybe. But he's going to have to work to get past Spinky and Fez. Oh, interestingly, if Spinky and Fez draw, then a win will be good enough for Andre. But you've got to bet. And uh, sorry, I must say, Gogo Bay has definitely qualified. So he has less to play for in his game versus Andre. It'll, it'll, it will make a difference, I think. You know, if you're 100% determined, like, you know, if the dice go wrong. And you dig in, you're like, I've got to do everything I can to win this match. That mentality does make a difference compared to, oh, well, I don't care, I've qualified. So there's a chance. I'm not going to say he's going to approach it badly, or anybody will. But, you know, you're more likely to go on tilt and just accept defeat or whatever um, in this kind of situation when it doesn't you know, really matter to you as much. Um, so... I'm still going to just bet on the people ahead, though, right? The ones who, you know, Spinky just need to likely just need to draw. Not that likely, but likely just need to draw. Let's go with Go Go Bay and Spinky to qualify. And then the last group, Group P, we've got Niaga with six points. And his last game is versus Mongloom. So Niaga is definitely qualified with Wood Elves. And then Dion Lord and Alan76, both on a win and a loss, are playing to see who joins him. Uh, Mongloom is, unfortunately for him, eliminated. So yeah, an undead mirror to see who joins Niagara. Very cool. So yeah, congrats to everybody you know who's already qualified and who's going to qualify. And 
yeah, I think it's all a bunch of good games here. Uh, I think it's been a really good competition so far. Really looking forward to seeing the third games and hopefully getting lucky in, in one of my games of the World Cup would be nice, wouldn't it? So there you go. Right, uh, best of luck to everybody. And uh, yeah, obviously I'm casting all of these games. Um, after the third round is finished, we'll have an official stream with hopefully myself, Miss Beltree and Andy Devo and probably Vituk again, I, I'd hope, where we would do the, the knockout draw. There's going to be a redraw where all of the winners are put into one pot and all of the runners up are put into another pot. So like around 32, 16 winners, 16 runners up. And then they will just be placed there. It's not like anything like, you know, you don't get to play the people in your group till the final. However, you cannot play the people in your group again. So for example, if Niagara and Dion Lord qualify with Niagara winning the group, then Niagara will be put in the winners group, Dion Lord will be put in the runners up group. If Niagara is picked and then is matched against Dion Lord, then Dion Lord will be respun and you, Niagara will play somebody else. There won't be rematches in the round of 32 from the group stage. I guess that's what I could have said straight away, but instead I rambled and babbled, but I got out the information in the end. So there you go. So yeah, we'll have a good, we'll have a big stream that will explain all of that. And I'm sure that will be very good. I can talk about what happened in the groups. There's been some great stories, some great plays already. And I'm sure there'll be more with the third game to come. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.